The Megalodon was the largest shark ever to prowl the oceans and one of the largest fish on record. Otodus Megalodon is an extinct species of giant mackerel shark that lived approximately 23 to 3.6 million years ago, from the early Miocene to the Pliocene epochs. Megalodon was formerly thought to be a member of the family Lamnidae and a close relative of the great white shark, but has been reclassified into the extinct family Otodontidae, which diverged from the great white shark during the early Cretaceous. While regarded as one of the largest and most powerful predators to have ever lived, Megalodon is only known from fragmentary remains, and its appearance and maximum size are uncertain. A vertebrae length of 11.1 meters or 36.4 feet was suggested in 2022, but the new findings indicate this would have been the minimum length. The researchers say Megalodon was likely longer and slimmer, so it might not look like the great white shark model after all. Instead, Megalodon might have resembled something closer to a mako shark. Latest research suggests that Megalodon could have easily reached the length of 20 meters or 66 feet or possibly slightly more. Megalodon probably had a major impact on the structure of marine communities. The fossil record indicates that it had a cosmopolitan distribution. It probably targeted large prey, such as whales, seals, and sea turtles. Juveniles inhabited warm coastal waters and fed on fish and small whales. Unlike the great white, which attacks prey from the soft underside, Megalodon probably used its strong jaws to break through the chest cavity and puncture the heart and lungs of its prey. The animal faced competition from whale-eating cetaceans, such as Liviatan and other macroraptorial sperm whales and possibly smaller ancestral killer whales. Megalodon was first described in 1835 by Swiss-born American naturalist, geologist and teacher Louis Agassiz, who named the species Carcharodon megalodon. Megalodon would be known by this scientific name until the late 1990s, when a growing group of scientists placed it in the genus Carcharocles. Megalodon Teeth The most common fossils of Megalodon are its teeth. Diagnostic characteristics include a triangular shape, robust structure, large size, fine serrations, a lack of lateral denticles, and a visible V-shaped neck. The anterior teeth were almost perpendicular to the jaw and symmetrical, whereas the posterior teeth were slanted and asymmetrical. Megalodon teeth can measure over 18 centimeters or 7.1 inches in slant height, diagonal length, and are the largest of any known shark species, implying it was the largest of all macro-predatory sharks. In 1989, a nearly complete set of megalodon teeth was discovered in Saitama, Japan. Another nearly complete associated megalodon dentition was excavated from the Yorktown formations in the United States and served as the basis for a jaw reconstruction of megalodon at the National Museum of Natural History. Megalodon had a very robust dentition and had over 250 teeth in its jaws, spanning five rows. It is possible that large megalodon individuals had jaws spanning roughly 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet across. The teeth were also serrated, which would have improved efficiency in cutting through flesh or bone. The shark may have been able to open its mouth to a 75 degree angle, though a reconstruction at the National Museum of Natural History approximates a 100 degree angle. In 2008, a team of scientists undertook an experiment to gauge the bite force of the great white shark using a specimen measuring 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in length. They then extrapolated these findings to estimate the bite force of megalodon at its largest size range, considering both conservative minimum and maximum body masses. Their analysis placed megalodon's bite force in a posterior bite context between 108,514 to 182,201 newtons, far surpassing the 18,216 newtons recorded for the largest confirmed great white shark and the 7,595 newtons for the placoderm fish Duncleosteus. 
Furthermore, the scientists noted that sharks exhibit lateral shaking movements while feeding, potentially amplifying the force exerted, suggesting that the actual force experienced by prey could have been even higher than the estimated values. Megalodon had a cosmopolitan distribution. Its fossils have been excavated from many parts of the world, including Europe, Africa, the Americas, and Australia. It more commonly occurred in subtropical to temperate latitudes. It has been found at latitudes up to 55 degrees north. Its inferred tolerated temperatures range from 1 to 24 degrees Celsius, or 34 to 75 Fahrenheit. It arguably had the capacity to endure such low temperatures due to mesothermy, a physiological capability of large sharks to maintain a higher body temperature than the surrounding water by conserving metabolic heat. Megalodon roamed diverse marine habitats, spanning shallow coastal waters, zones of coastal upwelling, murky coastal lagoons, sandy shores, and deep offshore waters. Its lifestyle was nomadic, with adult megalodon primarily favoring offshore habitats over shallow waters. It is possible megalodon migrated between coastal and oceanic zones throughout its life stages. Competition Megalodon faced a highly competitive environment. Juvenile megalodon preferred habitats where small cetaceans were abundant and adult megalodon preferred habitats where large cetaceans were abundant. Such preference may have developed shortly after they appeared in the Oligocene. Megalodon were contemporaneous with whale-eating toothed whales, particularly macroraptorial sperm whales and squalodontidae, which were also probably among the era's apex predators and provided competition. Some attained gigantic sizes, such as Liviatan, estimated between 13.5 and 17.5 meters, or 44 to 57 feet. Fossilized teeth of an undetermined species of such physeteroids from Lee Creek Mine, North Carolina, indicate it had a maximum body length of 8 to 10 meters, or 26 to 33 feet, and a maximum lifespan of about 25 years. This is very different from similarly sized modern killer whales that live to 65 years, suggesting that unlike the latter, which are apex predators, these physeteroids were subject to predation from larger species such as Megalodon or Liviatan. By the late Miocene, around 11 million years ago, Macroraptorials experienced a significant decline in abundance and diversity. Other species may have filled this niche in the Pliocene, such as the fossil killer whale Ornicus cetoniensis, which may have been a pack predator and targeted prey larger than itself. But this inference is disputed and it was probably a generalist predator rather than a marine mammal specialist. Megalodon may have subjected contemporaneous white sharks to competitive exclusion, as the fossil records indicate that other shark species avoided regions it inhabited by mainly keeping to the cooler waters of the time. In areas where their ranges seem to have overlapped, such as the Pliocene Baja California, it is possible that Megalodon and the great white shark occupied the area at different times of the year while following different migratory prey. Megalodon probably had a tendency for cannibalism, much like contemporary sharks. Megalodon Cannibalism Megalodon's size at birth was about 6.6 .6 feet, or 2 meters in length. It was a lamniform shark, like today's great white and mako sharks. Instead of simply laying eggs, as most fish do, lamniform shark eggs hatch inside the mother's body, and the young sharks remain there until they're large enough to survive on their own. During that prenatal growth period, baby lamniform sharks survive by oophagy. They eat eggs. So do many of us, but the eggs the baby sharks are eating are their own prospective siblings. And if some of their siblings have already hatched, they'll eat them too. Sharks have a reputation as eating machines, and the baby sharks are no exception. As of yet, there is no direct confirmation from the fossil record to confirm that baby megalodons were cannibal sharks like their modern relatives, but the inference that they were is strengthened by the adult megalodon's enormous size, which was likely both cause and consequence of evolutionary pressures acting on the prehistoric ocean ecosystem. Prey Relationships 
Though sharks are generally opportunistic feeders, Megalodon's great size, high-speed swimming capability and powerful jaws, coupled with an impressive feeding apparatus, made it an apex predator capable of consuming a broad spectrum of animals. A study focusing on calcium isotopes of extinct and extant elasmobranch sharks and rays revealed that Megalodon fed at a higher trophic level than the contemporaneous great white shark. Fossil evidence indicates that Megalodon preyed upon many cetacean species, such as dolphins, small whales, cetatheres, shark-toothed dolphins, sperm whales, and bowhead whales. They also targeted seals, sirenians, and sea turtles. The shark was an opportunist and piscivorous, and it would have also gone after smaller fish and other sharks. Many whale bones have been found with deep gashes, most likely made by their teeth. Various excavations have revealed megalodon teeth lying close to the chewed remains of whales. The feeding ecology of megalodon appears to have varied with age and between sites, like the modern great white shark. It is plausible that the adult megalodon population of the coast of Peru targeted primarily cetatheri whales, 2.5 to 7 meters or 8.2 to 23 feet in length, and other prey smaller than itself, rather than large whales in the same size class as themselves. Meanwhile, juveniles likely had a diet that consisted more of fish. Feeding Strategies One particular specimen, the remains of a 9-meter or 30-foot-long undescribed Miocene baleen whale, provided the first opportunity to quantitatively analyze its attack behavior. Unlike great whites, which target the underbelly of their prey, Megalodon probably targeted the heart and lungs with their thick teeth adapted for biting through tough bone, as indicated by bite marks inflicted on the ribcage and other tough bony areas on whale remains. Moreover, predatory tactics might vary depending on the size of the prey. For instance, fossil evidence from smaller cetaceans like cetotheres indicates that they were likely struck with significant force from beneath before being consumed, as evidenced by compression fractures. There is also evidence that a possible separate hunting strategy existed for attacking raptorial sperm whales. A tooth belonging to an undetermined 4-meter or 13-feet physeteroid closely resembling those of Acrophyceta discovered in the Nutrien Aurora Phosphate Mine in North Carolina suggests that Megalodon may have aimed for the head of the sperm whale in order to inflict a fatal bite, the resulting attack leaving distinctive bite marks on the tooth. While scavenging behavior cannot be ruled out as a possibility, the placement of the bite marks is more consistent with predatory attacks than feeding by scavenging. The fact that the bite marks were found on the tooth's roots further suggests that the shark broke the whale's jaw during the bite, suggesting the bite was extremely powerful. The fossil is also notable as it stands as the first known instance of an antagonistic interaction between a sperm whale and an otodontid shark recorded in the fossil record. During the Pliocene, larger cetaceans appeared. Megalodon apparently further refined its hunting strategies to cope with these large whales. Numerous fossilized flipper bones and tail vertebrae of large whales from the Pliocene have been found with Megalodon bite marks, which suggest that the shark would immobilize a large whale before killing and feeding on it. Shark Evolution the earliest fossil evidence for sharks or their ancestors are a few scales dating to 450 million years ago, during the late Ordovician period. Emma Bernard, a curator of fossil fish at the Natural History Museum, says shark-like scales from the late Ordovician have been found, but no teeth. If these were from sharks, it would suggest that the earliest forms could have been toothless. Scientists are still debating if these were true sharks or shark-like animals. Analysis of living sharks, rays, and chimeras suggest that by around 420 million years ago, the chimeras had already split from the rest of the group. As there are no fossils of these animals from this period of time, this is based solely on the DNA and molecular evidence of modern sharks and chimeras. It was also around this time that the first plants invaded the land. The earliest shark-like teeth we have come from an early Devonian, 410 million year old, fossil belonging to an ancient fish called Doliodus problematicus, described as the least shark-like shark 
it is thought to have risen from within a group of fish known as Acanthodians or spiny sharks. Acanthodians are not at all shark-like in shape. For example, they have diamond-shaped scales and spines in front of all the fins. But they do have a cartilage skeleton, a shark-like skull and jaw, and at least some shark-like teeth, which were often fused together. By the middle of the Devonium, 380 million years ago, the genus Antarctilamna had appeared, looking more like eels than sharks. It is about this time that Cladocelache also evolved. This is the first group that we would recognize as sharks today, but it may well have been part of the Chimera branch, and so technically not a shark. As active predators, they had torpedo-shaped bodies, forked tails, and dorsal fins. The Carboniferous period, which began 359 million years ago, is known as the Golden Age of Sharks. An extinction event at the end of the Devonian killed off at least 75% of all species on Earth, including many lineages of fish that once swam the oceans. This allowed sharks to dominate, giving rise to a whole variety of shapes and forms. Some of the most bizarre prehistoric sharks to appear during this time actually evolved out of the Chimera lineage. These included Stethacanthus, which had a truly peculiar anvil-shaped fin on its back, Helicoprion, with a spiral buzzsaw-like bottom jaw, and Falcatus, in which the males had a long spine jutting out of the back and over the top of the head. The end of the Permian period, 252 million years ago, saw yet another mass extinction event, wiping out around 96% of all marine life. But a handful of shark lineages persisted. By the early Jurassic period, 195 million years ago, the oldest known group of modern sharks, the Hexanchiforms, or six gill sharks, had evolved. They were followed during the rest of the Jurassic by most modern shark groups. It was at this point that they evolved a flexible, protruding jaws, allowing the animals to eat prey bigger than themselves, while also evolving the ability to swim faster. At the beginning of the Cretaceous period, 145 million to 66 million years ago, sharks were once again widely common and varied in the ancient seas, before experiencing their fifth mass extinction event. While much of life became extinct during the end Cretaceous extinction event, including all non-avian dinosaurs, sharks once again persisted. But they were still affected. Fossil teeth show that an asteroid strike at the end of the Cretaceous killed off many of the largest species of shark. Only the smallest and deep water species that fed primarily on fish survived. Sharks soon began to increase in size once again, and continued to evolve larger forms through the Paleocene 66 to 23 million years ago. It was during this time that Atodus obliquus, the ancestor of Megalodon, appeared. Extinction Megalodon was likely a warm-blooded animal, which meant it would have had to consume significantly larger amounts of prey to sustain its metabolism, and there simply was not enough to go around. In addition, Megalodons likely gave birth to live young, and it is believed these pups would have used shallow coastal waters as a nursery to protect them from other predators. The ambient global cooling would have led to ice forming at the poles, which would have lowered sea levels, making it increasingly difficult for the sharks to access these pupping grounds. Is the megalodon still around? No, it's certainly not. If such a massive creature still roamed the oceans, we'd undoubtedly have evidence. Sharks of its size would leave distinctive bite marks on other sizable marine life, and their really big teeth would persistently accumulate on the ocean beds. Additionally, being a warm water species, the megalodon wouldn't thrive in the frigid depths where it could evade detection more easily. Megalodon was not only a very big coastal shark that would definitely have been seen by now, it was also an apex predator, higher on the food web than any other living marine predator. As such, it would have been a huge influence on ocean ecosystems. The extinction of the megalodon had far-reaching effects. With this apex predator gone, whales, one of its primary prey, experienced a size increase without the threat of predation. Remarkably, some of today's largest marine mammals, such as the blue whale, emerged only after the Meg's extinction. So in short, 
the modern-day food web has partially been shaped by Megalodon not being there.